In the first section of this experiment, after building the electrolytic cell and using two car batteries, I applied 24 volts to the electrodes, achieving little oxygen production. Very little bubbling was observed in the glass. After making a few changes, I was able to get about three times the production. Bubbles now appear much more frequently in the glass. I did this by using a different electrical circuit, which includes a diode bridge to obtain direct current for the process. I also used a light dimmer, just in case I would have to reduce the production. In order to protect the dimmer in case of a short circuit in the diodes, I used a normal kitchen electric stove as a limiting resistor. For the sake of the explanation, here is a pictorial diagram of the circuit. Power from the household power line goes first through the dimmer circuit. By doing this, I could adjust the amount of energy to be used, and thus controlling the production achieved. The output from the light dimmer then goes through the resistance element of the electric stove, and from there it goes to the diode bridge, which delivers the direct current which in turn makes the electrolytic generator work. The diode bridge I had on hand is not a heavy duty one, so it cannot handle a very high current, and I use the electric stove to limit the energy somewhat. Because of this, the voltage fed to the generator drops down to approximately the equivalent of a 60 volt DC current source. If a more robust source were available, more energy could be supplied. Despite the loss of energy in the heating element of the stove, the amount of gas produced was practically threefold. As soon as I can get access to more appropriate elements, I will be able to use a higher capacity power source for more abundant and sustainable operation. In this particular case, the diodes got slightly hot to the touch, but they were able to easily run for about 5 minutes, enough time for conducting the test. The solution in the generator did not heat up noticeably. I will continue experimenting. Maybe the next step would be to use a more robust power supply. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao Tarim.